Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I wish to review the effect of external forces like gravity on the temperature of a gas. This was first addressed by Boltzmann in 1895. You can find an English translation of Boltzmann's classic work here if you are interested. I also wish to contrast Boltzmann's treatment with the work of James Jeans as presented here. The exercise is important as you will learn that external gravitational fields cannot alter the thermodynamic state of a gas. Secondly, you will learn that the treatment provided by Jeans is an error. Boltzmann's analysis begins with an ideal gas contained in an adiabatic column. At first, let us assume that there is thermal equilibrium. You recall that an adiabatic enclosure allows no transfer of heat. When there are no external fields present, the gas will be evenly distributed in the column and so will the temperature because thermal equilibrium was specified. We can describe this system by the ideal gas law where P is the pressure, V the volume, and the number of moles are the gas constant and T the temperature. In this expression, P and T are uniform intensive properties while V volume and the number of moles are extensive properties. We can express the ideal gas law also in this form where rho represents density and R sub s the specific gas constant. Now when an external gravitational field is applied, the atoms will begin to migrate towards the bottom of the column. The pressure will correspondingly become non-uniform. In fact, both the density and the pressure of the gas will assume the same functional dependence with increasing height z. Yet even though both pressure and density now have a spatial dependence, they remain intensive properties as they can still be measured at any spatial location. However, their spatial dependence can be noted by writing pressure and density in this way as a function of height z. Now what is happening with temperature? It is easy to see that if one divides pressure by density, a constant will be obtained which does not vary with height because both pressure and density have the same functional dependence on height. As such, temperature does not vary with height and this is true independent of the presence of external gravitational fields. The temperature distribution inside the column stays uniform. For many, this is a surprising result, but if you are interested, you can learn more about this problem in these two papers, which confirm that Boltzmann's treatment was in fact correct. External gravitational fields can have no effect on the temperature of a gas which is adiabatically enclosed. Now let us look at the treatment by James Jeans. Jeans was aware of Boltzmann's treatment, yet he used a slightly different approach in order to get the temperature distribution of a column of air within the Earth's atmosphere. Jeans tried to argue that gravity was responsible for the falling temperatures of the air column with elevation. He assumed that a mass of air at the bottom of the column would rise adiabatically to the top of the column. During such a rise, the volume occupied by the mass of air would grow adiabatically according to this expression where P corresponds to pressure, V to volume, and gamma to a constant. Yet the adiabatic condition demands that the temperature does not change. But at this stage, Jeans argues very strangely that once the mass of air reaches the top of the column, it is immediately replaced by an adjacent mass of air with lower temperature before the temperature has a chance to equilibrate with its surroundings. He replaces the mass of air and by doing so he now violates the adiabatic condition because he has effectively allowed the temperature to change despite requiring that the expansion was adiabatic. What is the result of all this? Well, Jeans now obtains this expression for the temperature of the column of air as a function of height. In this equation, T corresponds to temperature, M to the mass of air, G to the acceleration due to gravity, Z to the height, R to the universal gas constant, and gamma to a constant. Yet because Jeans has violated the adiabatic condition, this expression now has a temperature which is non-intensive as you should be able to confirm for yourself by now. As such, Jeans' answer is not correct. It constitutes a great example of what happens when the laws of thermodynamics are violated. You end up with non-intensive temperatures. 
That is why I have highlighted for you that wherever you see a non-intensive temperature, you know that something is wrong, whether in a textbook by Jeans or another scientist. In the end, Jeans tried to argue that gravity was responsible for the gradient in temperature observed in the Earth's atmosphere. However, Boltzmann has shown us that this cannot be the case. If you want to convince yourself of this, take a horizontal column of air heated at one end and allow, like Jeans, the mass of air at the other end to be replaced continuously. You will obtain a gradient in temperature which has absolutely nothing to do with gravity and has everything to do with proximity to the heat source. That is all for now. I hope this brief video taught you a few lessons and that you can see for yourself why the fourth law and thermodynamic balance are so important and why temperature must always be intensive. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the videos to your local astronomy club, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.